Welcome back to Kiwoom, I'm Caleb and today I'll be doing a stock update on Alibaba. Currently the stock is down over 50% from all time highs, but for good reasoning. They have had increased regulations, potential delistings through Didi, as well as their anti-IPO earlier this year that left their public reputation in tatters after the Chinese government absolutely blocked them from going IPO. But this pullback and even these concerns have attracted some big names in the US market, from the likes of Manish Pabrai, Ray Dalio, and even Charlie Munger, the right-hand businessman to Warren Buffett, now have positions in Alibaba. And in this video, I'll be going over the business model and why Charlie Munger has now doubled his position in Alibaba to roughly 27% of his daily journal corporation. Now let's get right into it. So what makes Alibaba's business model so enticing? To start off, there are currently 1.4 billion people living in China and nearly 1.2 billion have internet access. And as of last quarter, Alibaba has 863 million active annual customers in China alone. And according to this chart from Statista, we can also see that they have roughly 9,000 won spent per customer on average every year. And to put this into perspective, one of the largest companies in the world, or at least most well known, Amazon has roughly 310 million customers worldwide who collectively spend on average $1,300. And this is only the 90 million that actually have Prime. The underlying 220 million that don't have Prime spend on average $700. So this in itself just shows that Alibaba's average user is spending roughly $600 more than the average user on Amazon. So I just want to put these numbers out here so that you guys can just see that in terms of e-commerce, Alibaba is absolutely killing it right now. And if we go into the actual sectors, as we kind of make sense, their commerce sector makes up 88% of their revenue. And the other 12% comes from a mixture of cloud computing, media, and innovation. Going on to the commerce section though, it really talks about why they've been able to do so well. Their commerce sector is logistics and local consumer services. A lot of this has to do with the commerce segment that was Alibaba's largest source of revenue at $27.9 billion a quarter one of 2022. Then they have their cloud computing. Here, their cloud computing comes from database storage, management, and machine learning platform. And I think this is going to be a huge sector for them coming up soon and will take up a bigger portion of their total revenue. This rose roughly 4% in revenue and almost 30% compared to last quarter a year ago. Then we have their digital media. A lot of their digital media comes off of fees and subscriptions that make up roughly $1.3 billion. And then finally, just trying to go over this kind of quickly, they have their innovation and, and initiatives and other things like that. This is basically where they can meet the needs of their customers and revenue of this segment rose roughly 37% compared to the same three month period a year ago. The main reason why I even want to go over these numbers and break up their sectors is that Alibaba has been on the fast track in terms of growth in all of their sectors. Many critics will talk about how you cannot base future projections off of a company's best year, and yeah, totally true. I just think that if you cut Alibaba's numbers even by 25%, they're still undervalued on a fundamental standpoint to some extent. So now the question is, why has Alibaba been on a downslope for so long? We're talking from October 20th till now. January 2022. And I genuinely think that it's been the market sentiment being relatively negative around Alibaba and Chinese stocks as a general that has been, you know, sending them spiraling downward. I think that Alibaba went under 200. It was just article after article about Chinese regulations that stopped a lot of investors from taking a position, even from a value standpoint, and many selling off. Now, here's the thing while I worry about the Chinese government and a lot of the antitrust laws, that are gonna amount of a lot of volume to Alibaba is going to get, I don't think this is gonna be the main concern. I think it's the SEC or the US government trying to go into their books and China potential lying about Alibaba's revenue. I think this could create a problem, but Charlie Munger feels that with their current valuation, Alibaba is just a little too cheap to ignore. Munger states that with roughly a 50% drop in the first quarter of 2021, and multiple problems stacking on top of each other as of last year, the market is no longer rationally looking at Alibaba's prospects for sustained e-commerce growth. For this reason, Alibaba's platform volume has been discounted way too steeply for him. Alibaba said that it's roughly gonna add 500 
more accounts in just the rest of 2021. What this basically means was that they're going to have 1.5 billion active customers on the platform by year end. If we were to apply a discount factor of roughly 20%, we can see that like with this growth, that if you adjust their EPS for $7.74 and in 2023 and their EPS for $9.17 in 2025, basically what he's trying to say is that fair value wise with risk adjustment, that their intrinsic value is roughly $195. And with them trying to expand into Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, Vietnam, the overall just Southeast Asia, he believes that it could be all the way up to, with revaluing in future projections, all the way up to $223 where Alibaba can get to even before being considered overvalued. He has decided that he wanted to double down on Alibaba near the one-year lows while the market turned the other way. Charlie Munger is trying to teach the market a lesson here once again. Focus on Alibaba's commerce possibilities in China ahead, and this has a lot to do with the expanding addressable market and significant tailwinds for user growth in the overall Southeast Asia. Alibaba's sales and EPS are going to grow at double digits in the near future, and the firm's full intrinsic value is material higher than Alibaba's current share price. But yeah, I mean, that's basically all I have. I just want to show you guys what Munger's reasoning and rationale behind doubling down on Alibaba really is. It currently takes up roughly 27% of his portfolio at the Daily Journal. And I mean, I don't know. I, in my opinion, I do think Alibaba from a fundamental standpoint is really good. What is going to be a major concern is the SEC trying to come in. And another thing is that, you know, for social security reasons in terms of China, I don't think that they're going to open up. And whether this leads to delisting Alibaba or I mean, hey, maybe this will be the first time in history that China really does this and opens up their books. I think there's going to be a lot of volatility. Um, but yeah, I think right now, if you want to start your position in Alibaba, great time to do so. But that's basically all I have. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Make sure to tell someone that you love them. And peace.